great to see you again. And this morning we're thinking about characters in the Bible who were in lockdown. And this is the first episode, the first week of our series looking at characters in the Bible who were in a lockdown. And we're all in a lockdown situation, aren't we? I believe it's week 11. I think that's right. Week 11 of our own particular Covid lockdown. But these characters had their own version of lockdown. Each one's different. And today we're looking at Noah. Noah's own particular lockdown. Noah and his family who were in a particular type of lockdown. You'll all know the story. This is a little bit different because it's read from the Rhyming Bible, written by Bob Hartman, who we, we use a lot of his stories. But you'll recognise the story and you can enjoy the action. I'll talk to you about it at the end. See you later. A floating zoo. When God looked at all the people he'd made, he sighed at the sight of them. They're really quite bad. It makes me so sad. I think I should start again. He managed to find just one good man though. St God called to Noah by name. Build a big boat. Make sure it will float. I warn you, it's going to rain. Then Noah did all God told him to do. He followed God's pattern true. He built a great ark from gopher wood bark and the rest of the gopher wood too. He warned all his neighbours the rains would come but they all just laughed in his face. Your boat is a joke. Who cares if it floats? We never get floods in this place. Now Noah, God said, here's another small job. I want you to build me a zoo. Hippos and hares, beavers and bears, a couple of each will do. So Noah collected a world full of beasts, menageried two by two, donkeys and dogs, ferrets and frogs, kittens and kangaroos. When Noah had loaded the beasts on board, and all of his family too, God shut the door. It started to pour just eight members in the crew. So Noah, his wife, their three sons and wives were safe as the waters rose high. But down on the ground, everyone drowned as rain fell in sheets from the sky. For 40 long days and 40 long nights, the rain never ceased to fall. Water like fountains covered the mountains. No bits of land left at all. Floating alone on the watery world, 150 days. Noah just waited. He hoped and he prayed that the floods would all go away. The ark came to rest on Ararat, a mountain top stop so tall. Noah sent from his hand a bird to find land, but the raven found nothing at all. So Noah sent out a white dove instead, and when it came back with a leaf, he knew at long last that the flooding was past, and all of his passengers all could leave. So out they all poured, and God told them plain, to claim the whole earth fresh and new, fill up my world with boys and with girls, and yes, baby animals too. Then, up in the sky, God painted a sign, a rainbow, a promise above. I never will send rain like this rain again and cover the world in a flood. The 
Rose went into Brighton, elephant, giraffe and kangaroo All were safely stowed away on that great and awful day down came the rain in torrents, splish splash. Down came the rain in torrents, splish splash. Down came the rain in torrents, but Nora and his family were safe. Whenever you see a rainbow, whenever you see a rainbow, whenever you see a rainbow. So Mr. Noah built an ark, the people thought it such a lark. Mr. Noah pleaded so, but into the ark they would not go. Down came the rain in torrents, splish splash, down came the rain in torrents, splish splash, down came the rain in torrents, but Noah and his family were safe. Elephant, giraffe and kangaroo All were safely stored away On that great and awful day Down came the rain in torrents Splish splash Down came the rain in torrents Splish splash Down came the rain in torrents But Nora and his family were safe Oh, down came the rain in torrents Splish splash Down came the rain in torrents Splish splash Down came the rain in torrents But Nora and his family were safe Whenever you see a rainbow, whenever you see a rainbow, remember God is love. So whenever you see a rainbow, whenever you see a rainbow, whenever you see a rainbow, remember God is love. So whenever you see a rainbow, whenever you see a rainbow, whenever you see a rainbow, remember God is love. Okay, so for our craft today, these are the things you'll need for our Noah's boat craft. You'll need um, a dish like this. You'll have to ask your parents to help you because this is like this one's a glass dish and it's very breakable. So uh, be very careful, boys and girls. Ask your parents to help you, or you don't need a glass one, um, but a clear glass one helps to make the craft more fun. So a dish like this, or a shallow dish. Um, you'll need to put it about half full of water. Again, probably best to ask your parents to help you with that bit too. Um, you may want to put in some food colouring because it makes the water go a amazing colour, which is all part of the fun. It's great, isn't it? I went for green, swampy green. Um, you will need um, an egg box base like that, just half the egg box, doesn't matter if it's the top or the bottom half. Um, you'll need some pens felt pens any type, some stickers or some bits of paper you can stick together with a, with a glue stick and a pair of scissors, that's all you'll need, not much is it, oh I mentioned the uh, cocktail sticks, yes you need a few cocktail sticks, you only need probably about half a dozen of them, ok so let's start, so we're building a boat to remind us of God's promises I'm going to see if it will float like Noah's or if it sinks uh, like John's. So, um, what you need to do is on your stickers write down some of the promises that God's made to us, his people. So, my first one I'm going to write down is loves. Okay, take your sticker and wrap it around the cocktail stick like that. Okay, loves and then stick it in the top of your boat and we use the pointy ones because it's easy to put them in okay so any other ideas i know you can't shout at me but i'll shout to me but pretend can't we okay we've got loves um what about promise to be always always there uh, i'm gonna do the one i'm on a roll here loves always there forgives 
it gives us when we get it wrong and we do great okay i'll just do three because of time because we don't like to take too long over these crafts you can take longer if you do them later okay okay now for those who are wondering ah, just broken my cock stick this is one of john's homemade crafts never been done before might never be repeated so so i've got on my boat my promises boat i've got loves god loves god's always there and god forgives brilliant okay so now obviously you can put more in we see how many you can fit in there now once you've got them on there then what you're going to do is you're going to see if your boat will float now if you wanted to you could make some um, some uh, your family in the boat with you because uh, they are part of god's promises now the only thing is because this mine is a paper a paper boat made of compressed paper what i think i'm noticing is the color of liquid is seeping up it's been ab anyone know the word absorbed yes absorbed by the compressed paper and what's happening is it is gradually becoming greener it was already a bit green it's certainly green now because of the colored water okay so you get the idea you can have a go you put actually you could build put this in the, in the sink we put the plug in the sink fill the water fill the sink halfway put the boat in see if it floats like that or in the bath uh, i don't think it would last long in the bath um, <laughs> but uh, you can have fun with that okay so if you want to uh, develop those you could perhaps change them you could perhaps add two or three egg boxes together to build your giant ark like promise boats but let's remember today boys and girls parents let's remember that god keeps his promises and there are so many of them so many of them in the bible in god's word but i've chosen these three god promises to love us promises to always be there for us and promises to forgive us awesome enjoy your craft making above all be safe and don't be too messy because just because see you later Guided by God to do something really remarkable. Build this enormous boat. Can you think of it? Saying to his family, go for wood, go for wood, go for more wood, go for even more wood. Look, I need I need you to go for more wood. Yeah, they needed to use lots of go for wood. And and it was just an incredible adventure they were on. One that it's just hard to imagine the scale. Well, Noah was guided. He seemed to know what he was doing. There are times, for those who know me, when I do not know what I'm doing. I'm struggling to find my way to go places. There are lots of stories that some of you know when I got, I got lost. Uh, Louisa, do you remember that time with young people in Watford when we went to the Soul Survivor Church and I went down the ra round the roundabout, was it seven times? And on the seventh revolution of the roundabout, the young people screaming, what are you doing? Which way are you going? You see, I'm not good at getting myself to places. I'm better following others. I'm so much better following others. And it's the same for us as Christians, as followers of God. We're much better when we're following God rather than say, God, come with me. This is the way. Because many times we do not know. We don't know the way to go. And in Psalm 23, this is the passage that the guys were reading um, on Tuesday night when we meet together to pray for um, for guys in the fellowship and guys that we know who need our support. This is the verses that we're reading. Uh, Psalm 23 this week. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. He guides me along the right paths. He guides me along the right paths. I've got this verse here, this memory verse. I've got it in little, little bits. See if you can help me. He guides me in the right paths. Can you see that? Just about. He guides me in the right paths. And God does guide us, doesn't he? He does guide us. I can remember on top of a mountain top with my dad when we needed one of these, a compass to guide us. When we didn't know the way, in fact, we couldn't see the way because of the fog. 
had literally covered us. So all we could see was about a foot in front of us. And if we didn't have had this, hadn't had this compass with us, we might have fallen off this path down a huge ravine. It was that dangerous. Compasses are useful. Compasses remind us and sh well show us the way, and God shows us the way. Let me pray for you, particularly for the children and their parents and teachers as they look towards returning uh, schools back to um, some sort of normality. It's been difficult, particularly difficult week for the children and young people. Um, let me pray for you to finish, boys and girls. Lord Jesus, thank you that you guide us in the right paths. And I pray that you'll guide the staff of schools, those who organise schools, councils, government, um, everybody involved. I pray that you will help them, give them wisdom as they make good choices, right choices, right path choices for all these children and young people. Those starting school, those finishing schools, those beginning and finishing examination certificates. I pray that you will um, grant your peace and your wisdom. Um, and Lord, and may all children be able to return to some sort of school in the near future, Lord Jesus. But Lord, we pray for safety and we pray for wisdom as this um, procedures are developed and finished off. Lord, we pray for parents and families as they work through how that looks like, uh, how they can manage that for their own situations. Lord Jesus, being in all things, Lord Jesus, may we, may we choose to trust in your wisdom and Lord, may you guide us as we continue to follow you in the right paths. Amen. See you soon. Bye.